Hi, my name is Arun Subramanian. I am the Senior Product Marketing Manager for the Windows client group here in India. Uh, we have had a fantastic launch with Windows 7 and there's a lot of excitement out there in the market and in organizations around the new operating system from Microsoft. And we have also got a lot of queries from customers on the way to go about buying this particular operating system or licensing Windows 7. I wanted to take this opportunity to clarify a lot of questions that we get from customers and IT pros around the licensing. So today's uh, talk is more about some of the licensing basics and trying to clarify some of the most frequently asked questions of us. So a couple of licensing basics. The first is around a full operating system. Every PC needs a full operating system and you typically get a full operating system either pre-installed from the OEM at the time of purchase or you could buy a full operating system from a retail store. These retail stores could be the likes of Chromas. The second is around volume licensing. Now most of the customers who go about buying in bulk look at volume licensing as an option. Volume licensing for client covers only the upgrade you need to have the qualifying OS or the full version OS on your PC before you can look at procuring a Windows 7 or a Windows client operating system under volume licensing. So volume licensing typically are your select, your select plus, open enterprise agreement. So all of these agreements once again to re reiterate is only for your upgrades. The third is around the transferability of the Windows uh, license that comes pre-installed with your OEM PC. That particular license cannot be transferred to another PC. The Windows operating system license is specific to a given PC and it lives and dies with that PC. So I hope that gave you a pers perspective on some of the uh, basics around Windows licensing. So I hope that gave you a perspective around some of the Windows operating system licensing basics. Now moving on to how do you go about procuring yourself a Windows 7 license? It's pretty simple either through the OEM, through the retail or through volume licensing. I did clarify each of these in my previous um, uh, slide back there but just to reiterate the point once again. The OEM license is your way to procure a full version operating system that comes bundled along with your PC. So that particular license can be procured from your OEM or from your PC manufacturer. The second is to go and procure it from the retail store. And from the retail store you can buy either a full version operating system or you could buy the upgrade. The volume licensing is the final way to procure a license but that covers only the upgrade. Like I had mentioned before, a volume licensing agreement like that of a select, a select plus, an open, an enterprise agreement, all of these cover only the upgrade license. So these are some of the ways in which you can buy a Windows 7 operating system license or a Windows client operating system license. We also get frequently asked about uh, wanting to move to Windows 7 but they are not sure if the OS that they are running on their PC is genuine or not, whether they use the right version of the operating system before they are looking to upgrade. So here are some of those instances where customers are challenged and come back to us for feedback or inputs. So the first is around this whole concept of volume licensing and the confusion that prevails around it. In my uh, previous introduction, I had talked a little bit about having a base OS or a full operating system license before you could go and procure a volume license upgrade. So volume license is only for upgrades and customers typically try and install a volume license on a new machine. That's not allowed. The second is around not having clarity around which of the versions that qualify for an upgrade. For example, here in this scenario, there's a customer who is using Home Basic and is looking to move to Windows 7 Basic or to Windows 7 Ultimate or to Windows 7 Enterprise. 
for an academic institution it is absolutely okay to go about buying a windows home basic and then looking to upgrade for non academic organizations you are not allowed to use a windows home edition and then look to upgrade that particular machine the other is around motherboard upgrades every time you upgrade a motherboard on your pc you are required to also procure a new license think of it this way every new pc requires a new license an upgrade to the pc in terms of a motherboard is considered as a new pc therefore you need to buy a new os counterfeit software counterfeit software allows you to be prone to infection from malicious software it's prone to vulnerabilities you could be affected by any of the malwares out there so make sure that you're running a genuine version of windows 7 and that also allows you to frequently update your machine because microsoft releases patches to make sure any of the vulnerabilities are fixed as and when they happen you are not allowed to be copying software and distributing it the final instance is around the kms activation issues and this is where customers have come and said that they have not been able to activate their copy of windows 7 there is an inbuilt feature that is built in and it's been there since the time of windows vista that basically checks for your base operating system it checks to see if your pc is running a full operating system before it allows you to go ahead and activate any of the upgrades that you have procured so if you have not procured a base operating system or a full version operating system it will not allow you to activate your copy of windows um, 7 or windows operating system that you procured through the volume licensing agreement so those are some of the instances and that gives you a flavor of what are the various challenges that come about of uh, uh, trying to activate windows 7 or trying to move to a new version and most of these instances tell you what's the right way to go about procuring windows now, 7 to clarify more on the volume licensing i had mentioned that it covers for upgrade only here is a great way to go about and check if the base operating system that you have qualifies for a volume licensing agreement if you are a non academic institution or an organization you cannot buy a home version of the operating system as a full os if you are an academic institution you are permitted to buy a home edition and all of these uh, are listed in our microsoft site you can go to microsoft.com slash piracy slash know the facts all of the answers as to which are the qualifying os are right up there i'll just pick a quick example here so if you uh, drop the menu down and pick open license and then looked at trying to go and select windows 7 home basic as an operating system there it popped up the answer saying no and finally we get a lot of questions around hey so i just discovered that the base operating system or the full os that's running on my machine does not qualify as a full os based on what i just did so in that case how do i go about fixing that or resolving it well the short answer is there are two ways one is to get the genuine software under the ggs which is get genuine software and the other option is to get the genuine software under ggwa which is get genuine windows agreement